When I think about success, one word comes to mind: consistency. Consistency is more important than perfection. It's through consistency that we're able to succeed at anything that we put our minds to. In this world that's filled with so much noise and information, how do we really stand out and be who we were really meant to be? In this podcast, we focus on injecting you with positivity, optimism, and strategies all centered around helping you be who you were always meant to be in business and life. Be inspired to show up in your own skin to learn strategies, habits, and skills from others as we share our own life journeys and stories. There's no other you, and you know yourself better than anyone else. So be prepared to take away habitual tidbits, tactics that will encourage you to pursue and live your life, not the one others want you to live. Welcome to Stand Out Be You, where you don't have to be perfect; you just have to be you. Hi, it's Tequila, and yes, I'm your host, and I'm here with Jasmine Duff, owner of Season Twenty Six. Today, we're going to be discussing blogging, life, and consistency with Jasmine and her approach to helping women live life confidently through Christ, so they can get rid of overwhelm. Now, before Jasmine joins us, just as a reminder. If you have any questions or require assistance, you can reach Jasmine online at season26.com. I will link all of that in the show notes. Jasmine, welcome to Stand Out Be You. Let's get to know you a little bit better. Tell us more about you and fill in the gaps. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. My name is Jasmine Duff, and I am a faith-based blogger from Birmingham, Alabama, born and raised. I grew up in the church, kind of like since I was a wee-wee little baby. Um, my father's a minister, and then I have my mom and my two younger siblings. So that's kind of what gave me my foundation as a blogger and kind of like what was pulled out of me more as I got into writing. And season 26 came about during a time of like unemployment last year when I was kind of like in between jobs and kind of lost trying to find what is it that I'm really down here to do and my calling. And I'd always talked about writing. I've always had a passion for public speaking and interacting. So it just kind of came about like taking a leap of faith. Like if I can't find any employment outside the home, what has God already given me that I can use as an asset? And you know, Jasmine, the thing that I loved when I started looking through your website is that you have been consistent, and that's one of the big challenges with having a blog <laughs> is that consistency, and you've you've done it. Um, but let's rerun a little bit about talking about the entrepreneurship and then the unemployment part, and you decided to start writing, having your blog, because that's one of the first things that I think individuals that say I want to start a website, but they don't know how to do it or where to go. What did you do? So I was working at a nonprofit organization, and I was having the closing ceremony for one of my programs.、Um, and I was looking for a keynote speaker to come talk to my girls. And I found Javasia Harris Bowser of CJ and Wright Network here in Birmingham. It's a network for women who write and blog. And so I'd always been telling the girls, like, we should write a blog this summer. We should do different writing activities, just something creative, because it was a STEM-based camp. And so when I had Javasia come speak at the ceremony, I remember it was on my birthday, and I was kind of down because I was like, oh no, I have to work on my birthday. And I have to work late. Great,、um, but when she started speaking, I was like, "This is one of the best birthday gifts I could have ever given myself." So immediately when she was done, I went and joined CJ and Wright. And just having somebody as like an instructor, just some guidance.、Um, I firmly believe in learning from those who learning from your elders and taking in knowledge from the wise. So that sense of community she provides and the instruction has been really great to helping me stay consistent. Like even when I don't feel like writing, she usually has some different resource, or we'll have like a blogger meetup or something on the weekend where we all get together and write. And so it's helped me develop a greater sense of confidence and consistency in my craft. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Now you said that you help women be able to really、um, be more confident through Christ and to get rid of the overwhelm. How do you go about doing that? Tell us a little bit more about that process.、Um, I do it through transparency. 
through my writing, through my events, through I host virtual Bible studies in my Facebook groups. Um, and when I host live events, we always try to get together and just talk. Like one of the events I had last year was Chat and Chill. And we talked about relationship goals. And, you know, we watched Insecure on HBO. I don't know if anybody's familiar with that. But we watched the episode of Insecure and then talked about our own relationship goals. And we talked about the story of Ruth because people are always talking about a woman should just be waiting to find a husband. And I'm like, well, yes, that's great. But you also have a whole life to live out here. So through transparency, that's my greatest tool because the only way I can write and the only way it can heal and help me is to be honest. So I always find that women relate the most. Whenever I write that post or whenever I do that event or talk about something where I'm like, ooh, girl, this is too much. Now I need to know all that. That's when I get like a billion comments and people texting me like, thank you so much for sharing. Because life can be really overwhelming. And especially when you try to do it as a Christian, there's this often pressure to be perfect, everything right in order to earn God's favor or to earn God's love. But I just say, instead of trying to earn it, you have to walk and know that it's already yours. You fight from a place of victory, not trying to get be victorious, you know? So my goal is to help women avoid depression that I dealt with so much as a young graduate and to avoid anxiety that I also dealt with while trying to find employment outside of the household and things and start to look at your things around you in your household, in your neighborhood, instead of like responsibilities, look at them more as like a part of your queendom. Okay, you got kids, those are three citizens of your queendom. You got this job that is one source of income in your queendom. You got this husband that is the king to your queendom. And because God says we're a royal priesthood. So these things aren't like here to overwhelm you and knock you down. They're blessings from the Father to help you be this wonderful queen that you are. So just shifting from that mindset of like, oh, this is overwhelming to, oh no, this is just another thing for the queen to rock today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and one of the things, Jasmine, I know that you mentioned, you mentioned that you were kind of shying away from this direction of your path. We mentioned earlier, that's a little bit of what, what Standout BU is, is really standing out and being who you really are. And I heard you say that you're like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be giving too much of me if I say this. And more people really attracted more towards you when you did share more of you, is that correct? Yeah, I think people relate to your honesty and your transparency. So I would always worry, well, if I'm talking about God or I'm talking about, you know, depression or something, people are going to be like, oh, that's too sad or whatever. But you have to stay in your lane. That is like one of the best lessons I've learned since I've jumped into like writing and looking towards entrepreneurship. Stay in your lane. Just do you and whatever people are supposed to find you and attracted to your niche will be there. So don't worry about anybody else. Those are other people's followers. Those are other people's subscribers or whatever. Just take care of you and yours. And if you work from a place of passion, you will continue to prosper. And if you work from a place of passion, the money will always follow. So just don't worry about nobody else. Do whatever is, you know, God sent and supposed to be flowing out of you and everything else will come in line. Just for the listeners. So on her website, you will see a a community of different women that are writing within her website, which is another part that I think is amazing that you have like a lot of guest posts and things like that happening. Do you see that it's getting challenging or have you seen a a similarity between your guests that have written for you on your blog that it's getting harder for individuals to really have that relationship with Christ or they're kind of, shying away from it a little bit like you mentioned earlier do you see that kind of happening with you know the society how it is today and just so much and so many distractions do you see that happening with individuals i think it's always been happening with individuals because religion and believing is a choice so like Mm -hmm. there's always been a need i guess i'll say or area for like you know, some sort of inspiration or just to let people know Christianity is out here. You know, we're always called to be a light. But I do think there's a similarity between like my guest posts and stuff. Honestly, I was so surprised to find people that would once again want to talk about faith or want to talk about their insecurities and their transparency. So like every time someone, like last week, someone wrote me and asked if they could write a guest post and I was just flabbergasted because I'm surprised to see so many people looking to make an impact in this way. So it's kind of helping me as I think more towards rebranding from season 26. It's just blog, perhaps into season 26 ministries, how I could stand to be a stronger platform 
in the faith field because so many people seem to be looking for sources. Like a lot of people grew, may have grown up in the church, and I especially know this as a Southern Baptist person. You grow up in the church and everything, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have a personal relationship with Christ. It's like you know all the rules, but do you really know how to like apply them? And do you really even want to deal with all that? Because it tends to feel so judgmental, and it tends to feel so much like black or white, you know, just straight or wrong. You either did it all right or you didn't. It's like condemnation. So that drives a lot of people away. So I try to use my site as a way to t- let people say, hey, we're not perfect. You can come hang over here with us and we'll talk about it. And here are some other people who aren't perfect and they can help you get your finances straight. They can help you get next week. We'll talk, we're will um, going to be talking about being slayed. So we're going to be talking about mental and physical fitness. So I try to provide people with everything that I'm feeling insecure about or all the areas that I feel like I need help on because that's how you build your network and that's how you build your tribe. You know, because when I looked at it, it's very inviting. It's not like... um oh my gosh, you know, you must be this or whatever. I like that collage of the women and everything you have. But you know what I think or what I found to be funny when we talked earlier is Mm -hmm. that say it's for women, which I go there and it has women, but you say you have quite a bit of men as your audience that have approached you as well. Tell us a little bit more about that. Men are some of my favorite subscribers. They're some of my favorite. They leave the best comments. Like I had a man come up to me. I was interning one time and he came up behind me. He was like, hey, just want to know, I read all of your blog posts. I love everything you write. And um, one of my friend's boyfriends was saying that the, the other day, like he waits on Tuesdays and Thursdays when the post comes. It's like an insight into the woman's world or an insight into like a an unbiased mind. So I'm happy for that because the word of God has no like restrictive gender. So anybody who was touched by my words, I'm always happy to hear that. Um, And I do plan to incorporate more men on the site. So next month is February. We're going to be talking about love and gender roles. So if you click back out there, you're going to see lots more guys. I want to make them feel welcome and secure as well. But I think it's hilarious. And I think it's also beneficial for me because I haven't really tapped into like men in their faith. So I can be open to like partnering with some organizations or different platforms to see how we can like blend the kingdom and the queendom together. Yeah, yeah. I think that's awesome. So where do you see it going? Let's rewind a little bit first before I even say where do you see it going? Tell us a little bit more about season 26. How did the name come about? What's that about? Yes, I always thought I'd have my life together by 25, and I didn't. Uh, So when I turned 25, I was like, I had graduated from undergrad and grad school. I was in a committed relationship with somebody, with my now husband, so, you know, with somebody I knew would be the one. And I was like in and out of careers, like I work in the nonprofit realm, so it's like if a grant doesn't come through, you may be out of position. So it was making me feel really insecure because I was putting so much weight and so much value in my ability to earn income in a position. Because as a millennial, you know, we were raised in the age of get your education. It's going to give you everything you need. You're going to be able to achieve the American dream. And then we graduated in the midst of a depression. And so many of us spent years after us, even now, you know, some of my friends are still in the process of recovering from that just initial hit. Like right when you're ready to spring off and launch into the world, you don't even have the ability to do so. Not because of anything you've done it's not like you didn't get the credentials it's just a happen of circumstance so season 26 came about after I got my master's degree I had gotten married and had finally gotten like the position that I'd always been striving for and wanted and I just still wasn't happy it was the most like depressing moment in my life because everything then felt like a big weight and a big pressure and it wasn't as enjoyable as I expected it to be because I was then beginning to realize is this even what I really wanted like did I even want to work at these organizations or do these things like how do I handle the pressures of everything so season 26 was the moment when I was just sitting at my job in this place where I used to go cry all the time because I began my feelings and I looked in the mirror I was like what is this I was like I, I want to write I want to blog but God if you want me to do it I'm just in this really weird season and I'm only 26 years old and I was like oh snap that's it <laughs> um, so that was season 26 in that moment I just decided to stop trying to get my life together together just doesn't exist I can be better though I can be better than yesterday I can be better than I was last year so instead of like tackling the task of getting my life together by 25 how about you just be better for the rest of your life so I blog about the areas that I need to be better in the most faith family feelings and finance Um, so come on over season 26 and start feeling better (laughs) and it's totally that when I've read through it I, I thought it was really good and that's what 
you know, one of my things is, is stories that connect us best as, mm-hmm. as beings in life. And definitely you are telling and sharing your story with us. And I love the background history and story behind season 26 and how you, <laughs> where do you see it going? Like what are the next stages that you see? Because you, you hit that first milestone of being very consistent with you know having the blog and even getting it started so kudos to you for that you've actually created a community where you have all of these women that are blogging and helping you out and telling their stories as well Mm -hmm. and now you're attracting not even only the audience of women but you have men and i really think they're coming over because they see the ladies but Mm -hmm. however you've got that happening (laughs) what's that next level where do you see it going so i'd like to rebrand this year into season 26 ministries and create a line of like inspirational devotionals, workbooks. Eventually I'd like to do like Sunday school books and um, vacation Bible school, like packages, boxes and things. So I just want to write more. And in order to write, you have to live. So I want to live a bit more, do some traveling, keep delving into God and growing in my personal life so that I can have something to talk about to all these lovely readers and women and men. And then I want to grow my website into more of just like, instead of just a blog, into like a platform. So like an interactive place where you can come and find a place to volunteer, to find like blog posts, inspirational scriptures and things and to help you in that area, a place where you can come and get resources that you need. So just expanding the site to be even more of a community based than just a blog. Well, Jasmine, it's been absolutely a pleasure hearing you and your story and what you're sharing, because I always say if you're touching just one person, you're making a difference. Oh, yeah. And you're touching even more than one. So tell me, if individuals wanted to get in touch with you, how could they go about doing that? Or even if they wanted to actually be a guest on your blog, how could they get in touch with Jasmine? Uh, well, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at djasmine T. You can email me at jasmine, J-A-S-N-I-N-E, at season26.com. And then if you head over onto my site, there's a contact tab as well. Okay, perfect, perfect. And then you said, too, that you have, like, because you said you're growing it, too, a workbook or having gifts and things like that. So you also mentioned that you have a gift that they could head over and they can look for that on season26.com, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, you head over to season26.com and you can get your free copy of Eat, Pray, Slay, a three-step guide to ruling your queendom. Perfect, perfect. So this part of the episode, I'd like to really get into what I call personality questions. So we get to know a little bit more about you. So the first question I want to ask is, if you could go back to your 10-year-old self, what would you tell Jasmine about life? Oh, 10 year old Jasmine, not to care about the opinions of, not to care about the opinions of others so much. The giver in me, the helper in me just always wants to like dive in and help you solve the issue, dive in and like help you fight this fight. But no, I really need to just stay in my own little lane and worry about me a little bit more. So I would tell 10 year old Jasmine, love on yourself. Awesome, awesome. And what's the furthest place that you've traveled to outside of your birthplace? Ooh, I went to the Dominican Republic last year with my sorority sisters. Oh, that's fun. And that's I hope fun. to go to London later this year. Ah, oh, yes, London's beautiful. London's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Now, tell me a little bit about your name. How did you, what's the story behind your name? But the story behind Jasmine? So my dad's name is Frederick. And my mom wanted to name me Frederica um, initially, just after my dad. And my grandma popped around and was like, oh, no, I do not like that name at all. Um, So she decided to name me after Jasmine Guy because A Different World was a really popular show um, around the time I was born. And she named me Jasmine after Jasmine Guy from A Different World. I love it. I love it. Jasmine, thank you, I have to say, for coming on the show Stand out be you and really sharing your story and definitely we've enjoyed having you on and we look forward to seeing what the next steps of season 26 will be. Um, but I have to ask you, do you have any final words for the listeners before we go? 
Yes. I thank you so much for having me on Stand Out Be You. I hope that I have said something to touch you or make you laugh in my time here. And if you don't remember anything else, just remember that season twenty six is here to help you move your queendom and to always treat yourself like a friend. There you have it from Jasmine herself. And everyone remember that you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be you. So go out there, stand out, be you. And if you have a story and if you're making a huge difference in your community, apply to be on the show. So until next time, and we'll chat with you later. Wouldn't it be wonderful to know the chances of success for a new project, blog, product, or service before you dive in too deeply? Entrepreneurs, bloggers, and online service providers often create products and services, then throw every selling technique that they could think of to try to make it work. This is the exact opposite of the approach you should be following when developing new products and services. Determine the need first, then build your offer around that need. It's much easier to sell something when your product or service is in high demand. I put together a guide that will help you learn the exact steps to follow for determining if your product or service idea is even worth pursuing. You will learn how to use the tools available online and how to analyze the results of those tools. You can go to tequiladaughter.com forward slash test idea. Again, tequiladaughter.com forward slash test idea to grab it.